Today, Denver unites in support of our dreamers. I know some of you may have heard the term dreamers, and you've heard that they are kids who study in our schools, they are friends with your kids, they are young people entering the, the job force. And yes, this is true, but they are more than dreamers. Actually, we are entrepreneurs, creating jobs for our fellow Americans. We are pastors, we are teachers, we are public servants. And because of great leaders like our mayor, Michael B. Hancock, we can become deputy directors in the mayor's office as well. So today I want to introduce you the great mayor of our great city of Denver, Mayor Michael B. Hancock. Thank you, Christian. Any dreamers in the house today? Yeah. Where are my dreamers today? Yeah. Where are our allies for our dreamers today? Yeah. I, I want to thank Christian Jimenez, who is a key member of my team and tremendous leader in the life of our community. I want to thank our great Congresswoman Diane DeGette for being here. I want to thank the great Congressman from House District 6, Jason Crow for being here today. I want to thank State Representative, the Honorable Leslie Herrick, tremendous leader for being here. We have representatives from U.S. Senator Michael Bennett's office and Congressman Ed Perlmutter's office. Give them a round of applause for the present. Thank you. I understand that Councilwoman Jamie Torres is somewhere around. Where are you, Councilwoman? Thank you. Yes. And quite frankly, before she became a city councilwoman, she was one of the key partners who helped Denver craft this approach to immigration. Thank you, Councilwoman Torres. I want to thank all the community organizations that have helped protect Dreamers and other immigrants who are here today. Of course, CERC, the Colorado Immigration Rights Coalition, Immigration Hub, United We Dream, Mi Familia Vota, FWD.US, Indivisible Denver, among many more. Thank you to all of our partners. You know, I will never forget, unfortunately many of us, the rest of us will never forget in this country, November 2016, that election, and the wave of fear that swept across this country and across the city and county of Denver. I will never forget the faces of the children who were scared, like a young eight-year-old boy named Geraldo, who stopped me at Taylor Elementary School after a back-to-school rally and pleaded with me to help make sure that his parents were not deported from this country. I will never forget the pleas of families who looked like Geraldo, who were looking for help. But there's something else I will never forget how this city and county, our great community, rallied to support those children, those families, and our neighbors, and won against the rising tide of hate. How we've time and time again stood up to this divisive administration to defend that support in court all over the country, and time and time again won because we are on the right side, on the right side of the law. But may I also submit that we're on the right side of humanity as well. How this country, one year ago, went to the ballot box and won against those who defended these policies and stood behind these policies, we've been working hard to be back. We won. Because again, we're on the right side of the law, and we're on the right side of humanity, and we're on the right side of history. And we're gonna win at the Supreme Court on Tuesday. Because again, we're on the right side of the law, and we're on the right side of humanity. We will win because we stand together, because we won't be divided, and because we believe the cause is true. Next week, the fight against the administration's disastrous immigration policies 
start with the Supreme Court. And I will ask the Supreme Court to summon the spirit of Third Good Marshal, summon the spirit of Dr. King, summon the spirit of Cesar Chavez, who pulled on the value spring, spirit strings and the heartstrings of this nation to look deep into the words of our Constitution of the United States and the values that were espoused in our prelude to the Constitution. This is a nation of dreamers. This is a nation of immigrants. We are the place where immigrants are welcome and included. So we're here today to defend DACA and to defend dreamers. These are our family members, our friends, and our neighbors. And we know what they mean to our city, our state, and our country. They are our deputy directors of community engagement. They're our accountants. They're working in our banks. They are the nurses and the doctors when we walk into the hospital. They're our lawyers. They are our administrators in this city and county. They're our teachers. These are great residents of the city and county of Denver, and we're going to stand for justice, freedom, and opportunity for them, not only Tuesday, but beyond the judgment of the Supreme Court of the United States of America. So we're here today to tell the justices that what this administration did in rescinding the DACA program is wrong and that they should reverse that wrong decision. Reversing it is about more than doing what is right. It's about doing what is just. And we're going to make ourselves here heard loud and clear here today on these very steps. And it will be loud and clear enough to be heard in the halls of the Supreme Court in Washington. That we stand together to lift up our dreamers, our neighbors, our friends, and our family members. We stand by them in court, and we stand by them in the streets of Denver, Colorado. We will stand together as one Denver to shield our residents from being the targets of any radical and hate-filled agenda. Mr. Trump, I want you to hear that once again. We stand together as one Denver to shield our residents, our neighbors, our friends, our family members from being targets of any radical and hate-filled agenda. Not in Denver, Colorado today and not in Denver, Colorado tomorrow. When it's all said and done, just like every moment along the way, I firmly believe that after Tuesday, we will win once again. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for standing for with our dreamers, standing for our dreamers, and standing with our friends, our neighbors, and our families. God bless you, and let's go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now let's welcome Alejandro Flores, young entrepreneur, DACA recipient, and activist in our city. Hello everyone and thank you for being here today. My name is Alejandro Flores and I'm a DACA recipient. Yeah. Since President Trump's administration canceled DACA two years ago, we have seen, we have been hearing a series of statements against the dreamers that are not only false but defamatory. Among those comments are of Trump's Director of Citizenship and Immigration Agency who recently cast doubt regarding DREAMers' contributions. This is simply not true. As a DACA recipient and a small business owner, I want to make it clear that DREAMers are capable people who day by day contribute to the social, economic, and cultural growth of the United States. About about 91% of DACA beneficiaries have a job, and 5% have started their own businesses compared to 3.1% of the population. I am one of those people. My business, Stokes Poke and Combi Tacos, fosters an economic growth in my community and creates jobs for local Coloradans. Dreamers are projected to contribute about $460 billion over the next decade. 
But most importantly, DACA beneficiaries are parents of almost 256,000 U.S. children. And almost all DACA beneficiaries are part of a mixed status family. Ending DACA would completely destroy thousands of families. That is why we urge all beneficiaries to renew DACA as soon as possible. The tireless attempts of the Trump administration to put an end on DACA is a massive expansion of its efforts to separate families, uh, which has already shattered thousands of the, at the border and has separated others throughout the country. If DACA recipients are forcibly removed from their homes and communities, communities, businesses will close, economics will take huge hits. Not only will the lives of DACA recipients uh, and their loved ones be damaged, but neighbors, employees, and local institutions will also suffer. Therefore, we ask the Supreme Court to act with precision to keep the program alive. Thank you very much for being here. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce Representative Diana DeGette. Representative DeGette has served in Congress for the past 22 years representing Denver. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alejandro. And thanks to you too, Michael, for having us here today. Um, you know, this is a really important rally, but you don't need to me to tell you that. The banners that we see, the diversity of citizens and, and dreamers that we see here today, we all say the message. And the message is this. Our city has a long history of welcoming immigrants from around the world with open arms, and we are not about to stop now. This is a history that we're so proud of. Most of the immigrants who live in Denver have lived here most of their lives. There are friends and our neighbors. There are kids' teachers and their coaches. They're valuable members of our communities. And none of them, none of them ever deserve to have to spend their lives worrying about if someone is going to take them and deport them to another country, especially our dreamers. As we just heard from Alejandro, our dreamers are special. Most of them came here at a very young age. They grew up here. They went to school here. They helped our community grow in countless ways. We have more than 800,000 dreamers across our country, including thousands who are right here in the Denver area. And you know what? Each one of those dreamers deserves the best we can give them in this community, in this country. I want to tell you, instead of providing them simple protection, we should be providing them a path to citizenship. Instead, in, instead of forcing them to live in fear, we should be helping our dreamers to succeed. Instead of ripping their families apart, we should be helping them bring their families together because that's what we do here in America. Now, I want to talk about Maria, who came here to the U.S. at the age of five. She graduated from CU Denver, and now she's studying to be a doctor. Or Marco, who, went, who went, moved to Globeville at the age of three and went on to study at CU Boulder, where he was elected student body president. Or Marissa, who came here at the age of nine, grew up in Glenwood Springs, graduated from Fort Lewis College, and went on to uh, teach Spanish here in the Denver area. These kids are not a threat to our nation. These kids are our nation. And we better realize that. I'm here, I'm here for two reasons. Number one, to tell the Supreme Court to do the right thing and to uphold DACA. But beyond that, I'm here to say it's been nearly six months since the U.S. House of Representatives passed the legislation to protect these kids and provide them the path to citizenship, the DREAM Act. 
and Congressman Crow, who's standing here, Congressman Nagoose, and Congressman Perlmutter, we all voted for and co-sponsored the DREAM Act, and we are so proud of that. But, like I said, it's been six months. We need to pass the DREAM Act in the Senate. We need to put it on President Trump's desk. So, so it's two things we need to do. And with the lives of hundreds of thousands of kids now hanging in the balance, the Senate's refusal to act on this bill cannot be tolerated anymore. Now's the time to have our collective voices heard. We need to demand that the Senate do what's right. And we need to let the Supreme Court and the Senate know we are not going to stop until this is done. So let's go march. I want to thank you, Mayor, again for having this wonderful event. And I want to thank my wonderful hometown and my community for caring about what happens to every single person who lives here. Yeah. It means a lot. So thanks, everybody. Let's get going. Oh, and now I, now I get to introduce my pal, a wonderful, wonderful new member of Congress, Jason Crow. Thank you, Representative DeGet, for your leadership on, on this issue and so many other issues. Uh, I've only been in Congress for the last 11 months, but it has felt like 22 years at some point. So it's been a, a very wild ride this year, as we all know. Uh, I'm uh, Jason Crow, and I am very proud to represent Colorado's sixth congressional district. The sixth district is actually one of the most diverse districts in the nation. We have over 150 languages spoken and nearly one out of every five of the, the people that live in my community were born outside of the country. And what I know is that our strength, our vibrancy, the core of our community comes from that diversity. The fact that we do have people that have various perspectives and backgrounds, our immigrants are our district in so many ways. You know, I also had the privilege of serving this country in uniform where I stood shoulder to shoulder and served alongside many immigrants, many young men and women, dreamers, who stood up to serve this country because they love this country, they know nothing but America, and they are just as American as anybody else. So I tend to take it pretty personally when people say, and want to say who does and who does not belong in this country. Because I have seen people make great sacrifice. But they are American all in all but name and paperwork only. So my message to the young dreamers and the DACA recipients, the thousands of young dreamers that I represent in the 6th District, I will never stop fighting for you. I will be your friend, I will be your ally. It does not stop with the passage of the Dream and Promise Act. We will continue to keep pressure on the U.S. Senate and Mitch McConnell to pass the Dream and Promise Act because the American people are with us on that. It is a moral issue of our time, and we will be judged for generations to come on whether or not we act on this moral issue and provide safety and security and stability to our young dreamers and their families. We must get this done. We will not stop ever. So it's time for folks to join us in that effort and to be on the right side of history. Thank you to the allies and the others who are fighting every day to make that happen. Thank you, Congressman Crow, and thanks to uh, Congresswoman uh, Deget. Now we will hear from another DACA recipient, a young activist who's doing such an amazing job in our community, Gladys Ibarra. Um, I will be speaking in Spanish and we have interpretation into English for you. Hola a todos, voy a estar hablando en español y tenemos interpretación para todos ustedes. Mi nombre es Gladys Ibarra y soy una de las más de 15 personas que viven en Colorado bajo la protección de DACA. My name is Gladys Ibarra and I'm one of more than 15,000 people who live in Colorado under the protection of DACA. Hoy estamos en un momento de reflexionar, como Estado y como Nación, qué significa en realidad la terminación de DACA, 
Today, we are in a moment of reflection as a state and as a nation. What does it mean to terminate DACA? Esta administración quiere que perdamos nuestros empleos, la manera en la que muchos de nosotros proveemos para nuestras familias, pagamos nuestros estudios y la manera en cual aportamos a la economía de este lugar al que llamamos hogar. This administration wants us to lose our employment, the way in which many of us provide for our families, pay for our studies, and many of us support the economy of a place that we call home. Al darle fin a DACA, nuestra pelea para una reforma inclusiva sería más difícil. Me refiero al TPS, al DED, al igual que las generaciones que no fueron elegibles para DACA. Ending DACA would make our fight for a more comprehensive reform more difficult. I'm referring to the TPS, DED, just as generations who are not eligible for DACA. Nos quieren quitar la poca esperanza de encontrar algo permanente, no solo para nosotros, sino para nuestras familias. They want to take away the little hope we have to find something more permanent, not just for us, but for our families. No olvidemos que pase lo que pase en la Corte Suprema, no estamos solos. No dejemos que las noticias o los tweets del presidente nos confundan. Nuestro hogar es aquí. Pertenecemos aquí. Let's not forget that regardless of what happens in the Supreme Court, we are not alone. Let's not let the news or the tweets from president to get us confused. Our home is here. We belong here. Esperemos buenas noticias, pero hay que prepararnos en caso de que los resultados no sean a nuestro favor. We hope for good news, but we must be prepared in case the news we hear are not in our favor. Si tu permiso de trabajo se vence en el 2020, por favor, renuévalo lo más pronto posible. If your job permit expires in 2020, please renew it as soon as possible. Esta pelea no solo es de los recipientes de DACA, sino de familias enteras, amistades, aliados de personas indocumentadas, de todos los que estamos reunidos aquí hoy. This fight is not just of DACA recipients, it's of the families, friends, allies, of undocumented people, it's of all of us who are here today. El apoyo para la comunidad indocumentada nunca ha sido más importante que ahora. Por eso me siento muy orgullosa de tener a legisladores presentes públicamente apoyándonos y haciendo lo correcto. The support for the undocumented community has never been more important. That's why I feel so proud to have legislators who are present publicly supporting us and doing what is right. Y ahora me tomo el atrevimiento de pedirles a los presentes que continúen dando el ejemplo para sus colegas y que los presionen para que pasemos una ley comprensiva que no deje atrás a ninguno, especialmente a los soñadores originales, nuestros padres. I dare to ask of those of you who are present today to continue setting an example for your colleagues, to pressure them into passing a more comprehensive law that will not leave behind the original dreamers, our parents. Quienes arriesgaron todo para que nosotros tuviéramos mejores oportunidades y que sus sacrificios no sean en vano. Those who risk everything for us to have better opportunities, let their sacrifices not be in vain. Gracias. Thank you. Let's also give it up for Angelica Rodriguez, our interpreter today. And now I want to welcome to the podium an amazing legislator here in our state of Colorado, the Honorable Leslie Herod. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's a beautiful day in Denver to celebrate our immigrant community, right? DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, has been nothing but a plus to the DACA recipients themselves, but also to our nation and our economy as a whole. It is the heart and soul of, I'm sorry, in the heart and soul, in any immigrant in this city, is the hope for a better life. The hope to remain in the one and only country they know, the country they call home. A report released just yesterday confirms what we already know and see. The DACA program has provided long-term economic and educational benefits to the more than 800,000 young immigrants working and studying in the United States. It has also bolstered our workforce and contributed billions of dollars to our economy. 
But most importantly, it has made Denver whole. I am so proud to stand here with my immigrant sisters and brothers and those living outside of the gender binary to celebrate DACA and to tell this administration and the Supreme Court that we support DACA, we support our dreamers, and we support the immigrants in our community. I was recently talking to an immigrant the other day and he looked at me and said, as a legislator, what can you do for immigrants in our community. What are you going to do about immigration reform? He explained to me what many of us already know, that families bravely came to this country hoping for a better life for themselves and their children. That these families should be celebrated and commended for their bravery. But instead, this administration is asking them to live in the shadows and in shame and fear. That is not okay. That is not acceptable and that is not who we are as a community. This immigrant is my father, the person who took me in when my father was not around. He is an, a Guamanian immigrant, grew up in Southern Colorado. He always laughs and said he grew up as Mexican because no one knew where Guam was. And his father brought him here in hopes for a better life for themselves and their family. And I stand here before you because of that man, my father, and because of the decisions that his father made. And I am proud to stand with the immigrant community every single day. What this administration is doing is not only hurting people who are in our communities, making children afraid to go to school, worried that their family members will not be here the next day, but there are immigrants who have done the process, who've gone through DACA, and now they're being told that they may not have a job tomorrow, they may have to hide and live in shadows again, and they may not be able to stand up here like they are today and advocate for others in their community, in our community. There is nothing okay about that, right? So what I wanna tell you is that this administration, regardless of what happens with the Supreme Court, is put on notice. A reckoning is coming. This country is not what he puts in tweets, right? It's not what he says about our immigrant community. We love our immigrant neighbors, right? We celebrate our immigrant neighbors in this community, and we will not ask them to go back in the shadows. We will ask them to join the fight with us. We will stand with them, and we will celebrate each and every one of them, and we will fight back if they choose and decide to hurt people's status here in this country. We are all Americans, we are all Coloradans, and we are all Denverites, and we will stand with each other, right? So as our mayor said, immigrants are welcome here, right? Immigrants are welcome here, right? We celebrate our friends and our family. Our house is your house, right? And we will not allow DACA to be rolled back. We will make it stronger and we will celebrate not only the DACA recipients, but their brave family members who fought and struggled to bring them here for a better life. The dream will continue. Thank you. We will also have a very important member of the mayor's administration here, our wonderful city attorney, Kristen Bronson. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, advocates. Thank you all for being here. I think the message is clear in Denver. We love our immigrant and refugee communities and we proclaim it loudly. We put banners on our buildings. We raise our fists. We will fight. These, these individuals are our family members. They are our neighbors. They are our friends. And they do not fight alone. We support our city's dreamers and dreamers all across this country. From the very beginning, the city of Denver has supported this DACA case and its challenge to the Trump administration's termination of the program. That case is going to be heard by the U.S. Supreme Court on Tuesday. The case is likely to decide the fate of our dreamers and future dreamers. Many people, many cities across this country claim to support dreamers. In Denver, we have put our money where our mouth is. In Denver, two and a half years ago, Mayor, a little over two and a half years ago, Mayor Michael B. Hancock asked my office to create a special legal fund just for immigrants. 
We acted quickly with the help of many people standing behind me and in front of me today, and we created Denver's Immigrant Legal Services Fund. And we did that because we believe that due process should not be available only to those who can afford it. In Denver, we say to dreamers, you do not fight alone. Immigrants are 10 times more likely to stay in the country if they have a lawyer fighting with them, fighting for them. The Legal Services Fund is working. Through its grantees, the fund has helped hundreds of eligible immigrants in court. We've hired a team of dedicated attorneys. We have held Know Your Rights workshops across the city so immigrants know what to do and who to ask for help. We are building the base of private lawyers who are willing to do free or low-cost legal work for our immigrant community. And the fund provides direct representation to Denver residents in deportation as well as DREAMers. Denver has dedicated or raised over $530,000 for this effort and has budgeted another 200,000 for next year. But the fund still needs your help and I know all of you turned out because you want to do something. How can I help? I'm gonna tell you two ways. First of all, let me say that the need for legal services in the immigrant community is huge. It is massive and it is unmet. Our current funding is simply not enough. Two things you can do to support this effort. One. You can donate by going on to the Denver Foundation website. Two, next week on Wednesday, in connection with the DACA arguments, uh, we will be holding a reception and fundraiser. This is Wednesday the 13th, and we are going to make the fund even stronger and even more effective in reaching out to our immigrants in need. That fundraiser is going to be at the Museo de las Americas at 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday. I invite you all to be there. There is something that you can do. You can give. You can be a part of this fight. Please support the Denver Immigration Legal Services Fund. Help us keep families together. Let's give our immigrants the resources they need to keep Denver their home. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Um, in this table, we have the flyers and the envelopes. If somebody wants to donate today, you are able, you are able to do so. We also have flyers for our fund raiser next week. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, members of the media and our congressional delegation. Thank you, Mayor Hancock, for all you're doing. Uh, Honorable Leslie Herod, thank you all. And let's give it up one more time for our dreamers in the great city of Denver.